So I've gathered together a bunch of different accessories to share with you guys today to upgrade your gaming setup. First thing I want to talk about is this keyboard, the Wooting 60HE. I usually don't like 60% boards because they don't have the arrow keys, but for gaming those aren't as important and there's a lot packed into here for such a small form factor. The main feature is the lacquer switches which unlike traditional mechanical switches don't have pins but rather just a magnet which allows the keyboard to output an analog signal. You get two extra switches in the box but because you don't have to worry about bent pins, reliability is not going to be much of a concern. What what this analog signal can give you is controller-like behavior, which is super beneficial in a lot of different games. You also get full control over each key's individual actuation point, customizable from 0.1mm all the way up to 4mm. This is nice because I've been able to lower how far I have to press WASD, which gives me quicker and more responsive movement, but I then increase the distance that I need to press other keys, so I'm never accidentally hitting them. In addition to this, you can turn on rapid trigger, which basically lets you configure when you want a key to deactivate and let you press it again. I have it set to 0.15mm, which basically means that as soon as a key reaches its actuation point, the second you lift up, you're able to register another click. This is going to be really beneficial for Valorant or really any other shooter where strafing or quickly stopping movement is key to hitting your shots. Completely stocked, the switches in here feel really smooth and have a pretty nice sound profile. Unfortunately, with the Hall Effect magnetic sensor, it's not possible to swap out these switches, but they do still have a Cherry MX stem, so most keycap sets are going to work just fine. The keycaps really aren't that bad, they're double shot PBT and shine through which is nice, but I do plan to get a blank set in the future. The case is entirely made of plastic, which is really the only thing I don't like about this board, but Wooting made it super easy to unscrew the PCB so you can go put it in your own case. I ordered an aluminum one, and then I think I found the keycaps I'm going to get, so stay tuned a couple months from now and I will be modding this entire keyboard. A mouse I just recently started playing with is the Pulsar x V2, and I think it's one of the better ergo mice that you can get. I've used both the Model D and Death Adder V3 Pro, and this beats both in my opinion. On my scale, it weighs in at 60 grams, which makes it great for games like Valorant when I want to be making quick flicks. To keep such a lightweight build, it does have cutouts around the mouse body, and then the underside is left somewhat exposed, but I personally don't mind how it looks. The stock feet are actually really good, I like the glide these have, but Pulsar sent me their glass skates as well, which I'm really excited to give a shot. This mouse is a little smaller than the Model D, so it's taking some time to get used to and just find the grip style that's most comfortable. Aside from that though, the switches feel really nice and the side buttons have great tactile feedback. Underneath the x V2 is the Zowie Rogue Mousepad. I'll admit the red color has grown on me a lot, but I'm still trying to get a black version for a cleaner look. It's very large, which gives you a bunch of room to move around your mouse. The glide on here is really nice, and I've enjoyed it the most out of any mouse pad or desk pad that I've ever tried. I definitely recommend it. Right now I'm using it on top of a desk mat because I still like to have that underneath my keyboard. It's from High Star, and I like the clean black design it has. I've been using this one for a while in the setup and it's worked well. It dampens the noise a little bit from my keyboard and even without the Zowie mousepad on top, the glide is still smooth enough for my liking. Just be prepared to constantly clean it as it picks up dust and other shit so easily. Previously, I've used a couple of different gaming headsets, but with how much time I spend at my desk, it made sense to finally buy a proper pair of headphones. I'm up to two now and just recently picked up the Bayer Dynamic DT990 Pros to be my gaming and editing cans. And let me tell you, whew, these are good. I'm usually not the biggest fan of over-the-ear headphones as they tend to make my ears hurt after a couple of hours, but these are super lightweight and feel like literal clouds on my head. The open back design makes for a different sound profile than I'm used to as I can still hear everything inside of my room, but I have found this to make the audio sound cleaner and much more natural. In game, I've actually found it easier to pinpoint where shots and footsteps are coming from. Now, the open back design does mean that some audio is going to leak out, but if you're just gaming with your friends and don't have these blasting super loud, they're probably not even going to hear it. One downside is that the cable's not detachable, so you're kind of shit out of luck if it breaks. And while it is long to carry around, it actually feels a little short when sitting at my desk because it pulls on me even when I just stand up a little bit. I don't plan to ever use these away from my setup, but it's annoying that they don't fold down at all and the ear cups don't really swivel, so I can't throw the headset around my neck. I got the 250 ohm version since I already had an audio interface capable of powering these, but if you don't want to spend the extra money on an interface if you don't already have one, 
I recommend getting the 80 ohm version because this is going to work properly with most every PC. When I'm not using the headphones, I throw them on this cup holder hanger and dude, this is so dope. But before I had this, I was using the glorious Trident hanger, which is basically the same thing, but it has this super strong adhesive that's going to keep your headphones safely hanging underneath your desk. My audio interface is the Scarlett 2i2. This allows me to plug in these headphones as well as two separate XLR inputs to record and monitor audio. Unless you ever plan on recording two different audio channels at once, the solo version is a better option. With the various knobs, I can adjust the audio volume of my microphone as well as my headphones. I wrapped it in carbon fiber vinyl wrap because I didn't like the red color and it was such a cheap mod. It doesn't have the right inputs that connect to my audio engine speakers, which is annoying because it would have been nice just to have all of my audio in one spot. Now, I don't use these speakers too much for gaming, but when I do, audio quality is pretty good for how small they are. So I connect the SM7B to this interface and it's what I use to record the audio for all my videos. It's a great mic, but super expensive on its own, not even including the audio interface and the cloud lifter. From other videos I've watched, the MV7 is actually gonna be a better option for most of you as it's able to connect over USB, whereas the SM7B only uses an XLR cable. I have the mic on the Rode PSA1 boom arm, which is one item I do really wanna get rid of. It's built pretty well, but creaks whenever I move it and the design to me just isn't that clean. It's mounted at the side of the desk, so at the very least, it's hidden away when not in use. This controller mount underneath my desk is one of the coolest products I've found recently. It lets you hang your DualSense or DualShock controller, keeping it completely hidden away when you don't need it. I keep forgetting I even have it down there because it sits out of my view above where my legs are. I don't do it much, but I do like to give myself the option of playing with a controller so that I can just chill back in my chair and relax. Because I have a PS5, the DualSense is the controller I'm most accustomed to. Honestly though, it is extremely annoying to use on PC, and I'll probably end up getting a nice Xbox controller in the future to use. The button prompts in 99% of games will be for Xbox, and I've even had issues with some where the controller isn't even recognized at all without some extra configuration. So those are just some of the unique gaming accessories that I've found recently. If you want to check any of them out, they're going to be linked down below. Otherwise, I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you next week. Take care.